little Janet's toes. One, two, three, four. There's a little back of its foot. I love Janet feet. They're so perfectly, perfectly formed. Tiny little perfect prints. And then if we go on a little bit. Here's the civet track over here. One, two, three, four. There's the back of its foot. See how it's about double the size of that of a Janet. No, even more than double the size of that of a Janet. And then, of course, over here, the back foot of the hyena. The front foot's not particularly clear. The back foot of the hyena, which is much smaller than the front foot. So it's a nice comparison of size. It's also a nice demonstration of animal behavior, particularly with respect to the civet. Now, the civet walked down this road. Here's one track going that way. Walked down this road, off in search of food and marking its territory, and then walked straight back up on where his footprints fell. So these feet, these tracks here, are pointing in the opposite direction, going straight back. And you'll see that with civets all the time. They walk a very strict route, depending on their nightly routine. And they'll always walk back the same, almost always, walk back the same route that they've traveled on. And that's really nice. It's a nice idea of, it's a nice way of aging tracks because you know that at the beginning of an evening, a civet's going to be walking one way and then the civet's going to be walking back at the end of the evening. So if you can work out which ones are fresher, which direction the civet was going in first and second, and you see the tracks on top of, let's say, a fresh set of lion tracks or a fresh set of leopard tracks, then you've got a really nice idea as to exactly when that track won or when that animal walked along. So that's why it's important to know the different types of tracks. And don't forget to send through your questions on hashtag SafariLive on Twitter.